So hello and welcome to the 11th Digital Europe Economic Seminar. It's my pleasure to welcome Santiago Giraldo Luc and Cristina Fernandez Rovira, who will present on the topic of economy of attention and digital consumption. Uh, so uh, Santiago Giraldo Luc holds a PhD and a postdoctoral degree in journalism and communication. He is a professor at the Department of Communication and, and Journalism of the Autonomous University of Barcelona. Uh, his research focus is on digital communication, educational communication, the use of information technologies to promote citizen participation, on which he has published both in books and research articles. Uh, Cristina Fernandez Rovira holds a PhD in sociology and anthropology and is a professor at the ASIC Business and Marketing School and professor in the communication department of the University of Vic Central University of Catalonia. She's also the vice chair of the international and intercultural communication section at the European Communication Research and Education Association, CREA. <laughs> Together they have published on among others, social media use, digital communication and the economy of attention, including a chapter on the latter topic in the recently published Paul Grave Handbook of Corporate Sustainability in the Digital Era. So uh, we have approximately 40 minutes reserved for the presentation and you can ask questions along the way. Uh, so Santiago and Cristina, thank you very much for being here and the floor is yours. Well, thank you so much, Vokjek. I think it's very difficult for us to print well your name, but thank you so much for you and all of you to invite us to share with you this, this idea. So we are very excited to be here. And uh, of course, we expect that in the future we can uh, meet each other in a present way. But uh, well, for meanwhile, we are uh, very happy to share with you in digital form this presentation. Uh, please feel free to ask whatever you want during the presentation. We are now to, to start to sharing our screen to share with you our, our presentation. Mm. Okay. I think you are now mm, look, correctly seeing our, our presentation. This is a uh, mm, study we have done in the last uh, five years with Christina and some other researchers here in, in Barcelona and also in Colombia. And uh, we are now um, trying to explain the power of attention in the 21th century. And in this case, we are presenting you the last uh, study we have done in the last year. It's comparing the behavior of digital consumption on young people in Spain, comparing two years, 2019 and 2000, 2021. So the index of this presentation, we are starting with the characteristics of the digital attention area. Second, we are gonna present this uh, comparative study. And finally, we are gonna give you some uh, questions on, on, on this uh, research we have done on the previous, previous years. So with the first uh, uh, theme of this uh, presentation, I want to share these uh, main characteristics of the digital attention era. In this case, uh, this is one of the examples that um, justifies our research, in some kind of uh, behavior that we have identified um, in young people, especially, but not just in young people. We are looking for this kind of uh, behaviors linked with the opportunity to, to, to use social media. And uh, we are looking for answer, answers about how people is uh, using these kind of um, opportunities, perhaps, or uh, uh, tools to, um, to share their behavior or to share their, all, uh, your, their actions, but uh, normally or, or, or normally in the in their actions, they are not thinking critically on how, what happened with these actions. And this is one of the examples. And this is the other example we have also find in the literature review that uh, also ask us to uh, try to find the answer and, and why, why they are using this kind of dis dispositives or, or tools to, to share their behavior on social media, especially in social media. 
So with this, um, with this kind of uh, behavior, let's uh, justify our, our research, we start to define the context on, the, on the, this century to try to understand this kind of uh, structure. So the first one is the communication structure in the data society, and we, we are defining this, uh, this society based on, on some elements. The third one is the screens and, and wires. Uh, this structure on the communication system is uh, looking for a very increasing flow of contacts between a lot of communication systems. There's no more media that uh, concentrates this kind of, uh, of communication. We are also uh, talking about the deregulation of every policy in economic system. And we start also uh, to see this kind of entertainment multinationals, not just media systems, but also uh, another kind of uh, actors that are also relating with, with all of the different systems inside of communication structure. This kind of uh, new contacts uh, are start to, to creating oligo oligopoly structures um, linked to convergence and concentration of global companies that have increased their own commercialization. There is also a contradictory role of international and national institutions, for example, European Union, about this kind of new um, economy of uh, communication. They have no idea to how to regulate this. And there's also a lot of uh, lobbies that uh, not help also to create this kind of uh, regulations. And finally, uh, in this kind of uh, screens and, and wires system, there is an uh, integration of critical movements inside of these also uh, oligo oligopoly structures. This kind of behavior we are talking about uh, at the end of the presentation is, is, is like uh, we are also, we are mm, um, like um, um, making easy to control all the critical movement that is integrated on these oligo oligopoly structures and is linked with this kind of uh, more conservative uh, theories of communication or, or the power power theories um, presented by, for example, Niklas Luhmann on the system, system, um, systemic theory of power. Also, uh, we are also um, trying to understand the new structure effects and the competitive pressure on traditional media monopoly seems to opening up new kinds of uh, systems to communicate. But uh, in this case, we are just uh, thinking about the, the change of centrality because we think that there's no really an opening up um, new form of communication. It's just the change of centrality. And um, before we have perhaps more pluralism between this kind of uh, media system. And nowadays we have just five or six platforms that concentrate of all of this uh, um, public opinion or all of these communications possibilities for the people and also for media that have to, um, to enter to this new kind of um, system of communication to try to solve to solve a little bit of their their business or previous business previous business business sorry guided by the information monopoly of social media also we have a question about the, the public sphere here uh, and how they are um, using these kind of pla private platforms to concentrate also the discourse of a public sphere and the other characteristic is the expansion and homogenization of popular culture. Um, we also ask about cultural diversity, and we think there is uh, um, also a simplification of culture, uh, homogenization of culture, guided also by this, uh, this kind of also centrality of uh, channels of information. We talk here also with, uh, we start with a discussion with also with Herbert Marcuse, and here his uh, proposal of two-dimensional man and this, this uh, assumption that we, we are now not looking for this critical or, um, or fighting discourse with, with the own characteristics of humanity. There's just an example here on, on reggaeton music. Um, 
from Madonna to Ricky Martin and every all, all artist we uh, we know, they have to enter to this kind of uh, social culture frame to get exit, to get success on the on their also their their productions. And this is another um, example. It's the nose dive um, series on Black Mirror in Netflix's uh, platform. Also talking about the homogenization of this kind of uh, culture on or social also social behaviors. Uh, all of this structure help us to to talk about the projection or imposition of values and the uh, imposition also of polarized, polarizing ideologies. Uh, this is an, another kind of paradox because they are talking about, of, about uh, the freedom of expression, but in this kind of freedom of expression, we are seeing that uh, there is a, a, or the more, the, the, the majority of the voice we have heard on, on this kind of uh, discourses on social media are linked with polarizing ideologies. And this cellularization of behaviors is also um, theorized by James Williams on, on their, their books or their critical on this uh, using or use of social media to, to destruct or to minus valorate the production of identities, for example. And we also ask about the, 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 the how many platforms exist to share the products, the cultural products, because we also think that there is a, a few elements or a few platforms that help us to, to communicate or to share different uh, cultural products on, on different uh, population. Um, and finally, uh, this kind of fundamental component of global capitalism, uh, all the ideological framework that is inside of these uh, these platforms is conducted and is also assumed by 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 the people who use this kind of uh, technology, and the, the the problems are also um, mm, displaced or mm, translated to the to the user. Uh, as we said in these uh, last uh, weeks, uh, all of these problems with the, the regulation with the content of of uh, some social media platforms, normally the 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 answer of the of the um, people who is responsible for this platform is well, all the people is free to use our our platforms, and everyone is free to public or to share with the people whatever they want. So, who is to who is to the blame? Really, really here, and it's an interesting question to to ask. The second point is the free content production. This is a um, very interesting uh, change between the industrial production system with all of these elements that uh, I think all of you know how we transform this uh, kind of money in capital and we invest some money in this kind of um, um, elements of the structure of the production. And at the end, we have some profit, some investment and some wages to reproduce again the system a little bit. But in the next, I mean, in our or present um, century, we have this kind of platforms that they are not using raw material, they are not using wages, or they are using wages, but they are not their main, uh, main spending money. And they are not adding value to a new product or service. Uh, they are not transformation in a raw material. And they are not uh, giving uh, wages to the to their to their workers. Um, so they are not producing any 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 good. They are just uh, putting them putting for us a, a platform who serve us to share some knowledge to to share uh, some uh, um, content that is produced by the by the user. But this production is not is not paid in in wages. There's it's not paid on on transforming. There is a, a, a concentration of also of money and capital that uh, is concentrated on profit from these uh, from these platforms. Um, there are some different uh, characteristics between the industrial era and attention era. I just want to mention two or three. The first one is the social framework uh, in the industrial era 
on also in the basis on the um, association, for example, for workers, there is an extension of rights when now the social framework social framework is uh, giving us for the demissing rights. Uh, for example, the riders, I think uh, in Poland could be the same problem with uh, this kind of uh, social framework for them, how they are losing their rights as uh, workers. And also in the political framework, we are uh, we, we pass from a social democracy area in, uh, in, in, in Europe for, for just in, in the case of Europe. And uh, nowadays we are going to, to right wing liberalism. We expect in the, in the next years, perhaps with the change of Germany, the case of uh, uh, Spain myself and also France, perhaps could be a little bit of uh, um, hope on, on social democracy. But in, uh, in nowadays on, on political framework, we are uh, looking for a polarization, uh, also a nationalism, for example, here in Spain with the case of, of Catalonia. There is also an identity fragmentation, and there is also an uprising of the extreme right wing in uh, a lot of countries in, in, in Europe. And there's just an example here uh, how the platforms use this uh, free content to obtain also some, some revenues. Here's the uh, um, an study that we conduct also with Christina and other um, partners here um, on Spain that how micro influencers are used from different companies to obtain some revenues and some interesting um, engagement with their with their brands. So uh, the majority of them, uh, you you think you could see here that feels unsatisfied because they are at least on, on the 42% of their post, they are uh, working for free. I think they are also um, obtaining some of the some of uh, revenues for their work, but at least almost the, the half of their work on social media is uh, doing for free. They are not getting any, any payment for that. But they are very important uh, actors to determine the loyalty of uh, some established community that are uh, very useful for the for the brands for the commercial um, mm, firms or 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 companies that they are using this image this loyalty of the community, and they are using this kind of micro influencers to obtain some benefits, and. Finally, the concept of attention economy that is guided by um, these two, two or three authors. Uh, the first one that is very interesting to introduce is Dallas Mike, who established the concept of, uh, of audience. Uh, and this, when we analyze all the history of the media, and how the media starts to create a mass um, consume of information, we are always and every time explaining that they are producing audiences and how they use uh, these audiences to sell time to the advertisers. Um, this product is, in this case, is not the, the, the content itself. The, the product is not the content, but the audience that pay attention. So, when Smite starts to, to, to pay attention, in this case, to the, to the attention that the audience pay to the product, they start to think about the, the service in the informational society, who starts to pay uh, some um, importance in this kind of, of time that we are uh, paying attention to some product. And he also says that uh, the one of the main objectives of the media system is to maintain and to attract the attention and to keep this attention uh, as uh, as loyal to this media and this is also the every uh, action of social media to, to try to attract the audiences and to keep their loyal attention to the platforms this will this is very interesting because we will see how on the ideology and all uh, and the justifications that young people is giving to the study, we are uh, very clear looking. We are doing uh, very clear uh, finding that this 
loyal attention is very, very uh, a good work do it, done by the platforms. Uh, and then, of course, we are looking or talking about the business of selling audience commodity um, because the people is or, or the platforms is uh, selling this uh, this audience time to the different audiences or the different sorry uh, brands also. But there was a problem in the 20th century. Mm, the, the, the attention was very difficult to measure. There was no um, the tools that we have in, in, in the previous century. There were there was no so effective, and also the monitoring was uh, consensus. We have the the we give or to the brands the authorization to control our behavior. We also participate sometimes in focus group or in some surveys to uh, give our opinion for, for one content in the previous century. And in this case, this, uh, this quote from Davenport and Beck, who also um, established like uh, the, the, the first book that uh, just is dedicated to attention economy, they say that uh, we hope and expect that this will be, this, that this will continue to be the case uh, yes, of course, it's not the case. When Amazon uh, discovered the Greg Linden help to change the model of internet book sales to change to the item by item collaborative filtering, they introduced the capacity to um, use the data of the people who is um, giving some opinion on, on the web of Amazon um, looking for books to create the relationships between the characteristics of the items uh, and to try to, uh, to, to make the, the prediction and recommendation as the behavior of the users is giving all the information to create this kind of, of relationships. So we start to, um, to give all of this information without giving the, the authorization to do that, or at least not, mm, not the, in, in, in a conscious form. And this power of prediction and recommendations helps Amazon to uh, go to the next century, as well as uh, Google or Facebook or the new brands but that are the dominant in the, in the actual era to uh, surface all of these uh, other platforms that were destroyed with the change of the center. So the attention has uh, two main uh, phases. The first one is uh, a little bit unconscious um, in which we eliminate the most of the sensory impulses around us. And we have another phase that is the decision phase in which we decide, we decide to act in, to, on the information to which we pay attention. And this awareness, attention, and actions, this uh, is, is uh, three elements that they have a casual relationship. And we are, um, the, the, the importance is that with these um, with this impulses, with our, um, with our senses, mm, we have to decide if we pay attention to them. And if, if uh, we have the attention, we decide if we act on this, on this uh, impulse. So um, the awareness is transformed into attention when the information reach a threshold of meaning in our brain. And this is the case of social media notifications, or, or perhaps is the question that if, uh, uh, is trying to get this uh, threshold of meaning for us to give the opportunity to, to make a, um, an action on that. Um, just to finish uh, this first part on the attention economy, um, before the, the tools, the power tools that we have today, the information provider uh, want to know who is paying attention to the message. It was impossible on the previous um, previous um, era, previous century, without the precision that we have today. And someone makes 
and attention measure methodology available just at the end of the previous century. Um, as we said, it was previously uh, consensus, but now the algorithm technology and the matching capacity, they, they are able to store and process a lot of information, and this resolve this overcomes of elements of control over individual attention and action. Of course, there is an ethical framework to, to ask on this, on this elements, but um, nowadays it measures every uh, action and no action that we have in our behaviors as users of the internet consumption. And we will see that this internet consumption is concentrated on few platforms and these few platforms are concentrated on social media. And finally, this systemic feedback from this technology uh, is also um, now an automated and unconscious processes. And all of this uh, data is, of course, uh, concentrated by the oligop oligopolistic information collector at a zero cost because we are working for them in, in, a, in a free way. And I like a lot this uh, concept of concentrated of distraction because they are really concentrated, this distraction of our behavior and the loss of capacity to concentrate on some activity, of course, of young people, is also concentrated on these, on these platforms. The attention economy, so to finish this first part, is the relationship with, with economy, that is the management of scarce resources, with the attention, that is a scarce re resource, and um, is finite and is limited. We have no a lot of attention to give. We have some hours to concentrate our, our attention. And uh, it has some characteristics and is uh, concentrated in a measure or, or a period of time. So just uh, an, uh, an attention economy, we can define it as the administration of the scare commodity of human attention that has the power of attraction, the power of maintenance, and the power of retrieval in the case of we go away from this uh, from one product in concrete. We are now working on the attention economy laws and how we uh, can um, develop this, um, this behaviors that we identify in, in John people. This is the, the first part of the, of, the, of the presentation. And now I give the floor to Christina to share with you the a specific study that we have developed the last years. Well, I'm very glad to be here. So thank you all for being here also. I'm going to talk about this study. Uh, we conducted research among young people in Spain uh, between 2019 and 2021, and we can compare these two periods of time. So I'll be explaining more or less uh, this general overview of digital consume, first of all. So uh, we've seen nowadays that uh, the, the active social media users have increased a lot, in, especially uh, this year. Maybe we can consider the, the, these pandemic times that we are all living in. But it's true that um, we've seen more internet users than before, and also a more active social media users, which is the important part for us in the study, because uh, we've seen that basically the attention, uh, the attention when we consume uh, things on internet, when we surf uh, internet is uh, using social media platforms. Uh, this happened all over the world, and here in this in this data we can see, for example, that the time spent using uh, internet, the internet, is more or less uh, uh, six hours, even seven hours, and time spent using social media is more or less to more than two hours. So, um, although this is uh, kind of the official data. We've seen also in our studies that uh, people, young people, uh, says that they consume more time, more, more, more hours than, than two hours. Uh, usually they, they say they consume 
about four or five hours of social media. So this is kind of a um, very conservative um, amount of time. If we see uh, how um, global social media users have grown, we've seen that uh, before in more or less 2016, 17, we, we could observe uh, a really uh, fast increase. Then a uh, more stable phase during uh, 18, 19. But nowadays we are seeing another uh, increase which is um, growing very, very fast. Of course, here we may consider, as I said before, all these uh, characteristics of the pandemic, confinement, and these kind of things. But it's true that we are beginning to observe uh, a trend of uh, uh, growing uh, in, this, in this social media consume. Here, uh, our, our study is focused on Spain. Uh, here we see that uh, in Spain, we have an 80% of the population that says that uses uh, social media. It's uh, a lot more than, for example, Poland, which is here with 68%. So Spain is, is kind of, uh, it's, it's one of the countries in which we, we see that we use more uh, social media. And the daily time spent using this kind of, of, the, uh, of platforms in Spain is more or less two hours. Okay. And basically, uh, here uh, we see another important uh, factor, which is the growth in the use of social media as a main source of uh, research. Uh, things on or brands in in the internet. Usually, we we are used to to use a search engine uh, in general. Of course, the most part of the population use a search engine. But it's true that now uh, it's registered that forty one percent of people starts to use only uh, social media as a as a research engine. Let's say. So it's it's uh, it's interesting to see if this would cause uh, some fights for the for the dominant part of this uh, part of the business, which is the specifically the search engine. Basically, in our study, um, we used uh, two methods that I'm going to to explain now. The idea was uh, using these concepts that previously uh, Santiago has explained about attention economy. Uh, we wanted to explain how these uh, big platforms control this, uh, this attention of the young people and how they do it in the cognitive capitalism, let's say that, that we have today in our society. So uh, this, um, to do the research, we established uh, a a phase of monitoring and calculation of mobile phone and specifically social media time that people uh, used uh, their, their device or consume uh, using their device. And this helped us to measure and determine the attention devoted to this, to the device and to the social media platform. So we could uh, understand uh, or, or we could um, monitor the time they actually used the day device and the time devoted to the specific social media platforms. Uh, we studied young people from 18 years old to 23 years old in these two years, and 19 and 21. Um, when, first of all, we wanted to measure uh, with uh, a monitoring app the activity on the smartphones of the of the people of the sample of the population, and we used screenshots uh, that came from uh, an application that tells the time that you use the, the your device, and also another screenshot with the uh, times devoted to the uh, to the specific social media platform. So this we consider this is very useful because other previous literature, previous research 
we've seen that they use um, uh, an approximation of the time uh, of usage time through a survey. So they basically ask people uh, the amount of time they consider they are using social media. But this is kind of tricky because sometimes you don't remember that well. And so if we use the screenshot, we have the real time. So it, of course, it's useful having the perception of time that you can have uh, through surveys, but it's also useful uh, having the real time, the actual time they use uh, these social media networks. So basically, we could uh, have this real usage time, this data, and then uh, we could compare, uh, of course, the, the hours and minutes of, of the real uh, time, the apps that were given the most attention, and the time these apps uh, were consumed during uh, the study week. Basically, uh, we, of course, uh, anonymized all the all the all the data in order to study for the for the analysis. After we had this information, then uh, we organized uh, 15 focus groups uh, with the intention of investigating the justifications in a more qualitative way. Um, the justifications, the explanations that people give uh, in order to explain their uh, their use and their, their opinion of this um, social media behavior, social media consume that they realize they, they do. And basically we wanted to uh, see or to understand this, these opinions about uh, their own generated data and the use that big technological companies make of them, of course, after commenting the amount of the time actually they, they use and if they think this behavior is, um, uh, they consider it abusive or not, and these kind of things. Uh, both methods, uh, we applied these both methods in, in the two years under study in order to, to make the comparison. And basically, um, during the focus group, uh, we, we discussed three, three big topics. Um, the, this assessment of the self-perception of the attention devoted to the, to the smartphones, and in particular to social media, in terms of, of the time, let's say. Then we could contrast this self-perception with the real results, because of course they, they saw their, uh, their screenshots and, and they realized the amount of time they, they spent on social media. And then the motivations, opini opinions, justifications of the participants to explain this, uh, this high amount of, of attention that they devote to, to their mobile phones. So basically, we wanted to, to see these three things. And now I'm going to explain the quantitative main findings. And after it, uh, I'll show you also the qualitative findings. Here, just to summarize a little bit, because we don't have a lot of time, we have this uh, the annual di difference in the average weekly hours uh, of the use of, of the applications. You see here that basically uh, the, the most used applications are these ones, Instagram, WhatsApp, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, and also gaming apps. Then, of course, we have also browsers. Uh, basically, Instagram in Spain is, is the, the king of the applications. Uh, we've seen that all of them uh, have increased in their use. As you see here, uh, the data, especially uh, we have here uh, YouTube and Twitch, which is uh, some kind of new uh, for the Spanish users. But we've seen that all the, the, the average weekly hours have uh, grown. Then if we move to the percentage of users who use the, the mainstreaming and, and social media applications on the mobile phone, 
we also see that more or less the the same uh, we see the same applications and how it has also increased in H1, except for a little bit for for YouTube. The others have grown, especially Twitch, for example. If we continue a little bit more, we see that uh, the difference in the in the percentage of the screen time uh, has also uh, grown. Here in, uh, in, for example, in the year 2019, we had these values, which uh, have increased during the, this uh, year of confinement. And also the platform's users have also grown. So basically these quantitative results, what are showing us is that um, this uh, show this this confirmation of the consumption of the young people that continues to to rise and, and is very high in general. Uh, for example, this uh, it's important this this uh, thirty six percent of increase in mobile phone usage uh, that emerged from this comparative analysis, and especially this takeoff of the two main platforms, Twitch and TikTok, which are kind of new. And basically, we could see this from the monitoring data that we could uh, um, we could research. And then, uh, of course, this um, we we didn't uh, actually uh, ask for the pandemic factor, but it's true that it's something that um, that it's it's relevant in in this case. So um, basically, this. Twitch and TikTok, however, uh, they they had a, a really an increase, but this doesn't mean that we see a reduction in the use of other platforms, because uh, what we've seen is that the hegemonic platforms in in 2019 are still are still hegemonic, but today Twitch and TikTok are also added to this uh, to this consumption. So basically. Um, we've seen that um, the total time of consumption has raised. Now, if we move to the qualitative main findings, you'll see some examples of the explanations that young people, students, uh, gave to this, um, to this behavior. Uh, Specifically in 2019 and somehow in 2021, uh, surprise was, was, was like the main emotion when they saw that uh, the, the actual uh, number of hours they consume. They tend to think that they consume less than they actually consume. For example, here mm, mm, we can see some expressions of, of this surprise. Um, they thought it was less. Uh, they can imagine that, yeah, it's quite a few, but, but they don't imagine that uh, it's that amount. However, uh, especially in 2021, we see that the, the actual consumption results uh, are not made with surprise or concern in, in some cases. Actually, they are maybe, um, they accept that they spend this, this amount of hours uh, using their, their social media. Uh, but they, they, don't, they are not willing to change it. So they, they accept uh, this behavior as uh, something which is normal. If we continue a bit more with, with this qualitative uh, results, uh, we see a, a difference between the two years analyzed. Uh, uh, previously, some responses were uh, seen as some alarming points, um, but now uh, this uh, relationship with social media is taking is taken for granted. They they think it's something um, totally uh, normal, and and they they are not uh, willing to change it, or they don't see any any 
thing that could be maybe wrong or, or maybe uh, something that could be uh, in a different way. They take it for granted because uh, they think they are living and, and they are a generation which is uh, fully digital. So it's like being outside of uh, social media. It's like being uh, nobody. So they are uh, willing to, to stay there. And some of them consider they have kind of an addictive uh, behavior, but they are not willing to, to change it in, in the most part of the, of the cases. Um, if we see at this, uh, at this qualitative result that we found, um, of course, they, in, in, especially in 2021, they state that, that they knew that companies, uh, these this big companies, Facebook, et cetera, uh, own, that own the social media generate uh, this additional income. They take profit of their uh, data. Uh, they also think that users are not um, the ones who control this, what, what happens in the social media, in, in the networks, but they are not a uh, kind of, um, they, they don't show a lot of uh, critical uh, behavior on that, but they think that, well, if, if it's this business model, they kind of agree on that. However, uh, they justify, uh, although there are some uh, critical points of view, the most of them justify that uh, they are using these platforms. So it's kind of normal that um, these platforms had some extra benefits for, for this because they are um, giving uh, like a service that lets us uh, communicate and uh, maintain contact with our friends and these kind of things. So um, of course, some of them see or understand that users are these free workers that we were talking about, but um, they think that it cannot be changed. So this is more or less what we found in, the, in, in our research. Uh, of course, we want to still continue uh, doing more research on that. And now we are moving to the conclusions just to to finish our presentation. And of course, if you have questions or comments that you want to share with us, we'll be very happy to answer them. Well, just uh, one minute to the last uh, or conclusions or working questions that we have uh, prepared on, uh, on these uh, reflections about the, the data we have collected and related also with the first uh, explanation about the, the theory that is uh, under this uh, study. The first one is the, the asking the, the question about the systemic theory as useful theory to explain the social relationship in the 21st century. Um, we feel that this kind of uh, question is very interesting because we are giving to all this systemic issue a very simple explanation. So uh, it's interesting because with this simple uh, theory, we are, we are able to explain what is happening on all of the situations on social, on social uh, diversity, for example. The second one is uh, the social media and the platforms are absolutely concentrators of the digital attention of junk and not so junk users. So it's a very interesting uh, question about uh, which kind of model we are defending uh, when we use these uh, platforms, because if we are liberal, if we are linked to the, the main principles of a liberal economy, as the main um, um, owners of these platforms um, are affiliated, we are starting to think on the very problems of these uh, basics of liberal economy, for example, monopolies, for example, concentration of information for decision making. All of these elements of liberal economy are now um, absolutely uh, concentrate, uh, confused and problematic with this uh, behavior of social platforms in general. Uh, after that, we have this, um, um, like the, 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 the lack of uh, young people's critical stance toward their excessive 
uh, use of social media. Mm, and this is connected with the last uh, working question that is also uh, a very problematic issue for, for, for us, at least for us, that is the absence of a qualitative, a qualitative critical framework on this domination exercise by the daily platforms. And uh, also the lack of an ideological uh, um, alternative in terms, not just in communication, but of course, in terms of uh, social theory and uh, um, a very um, um, critical positions of the use of, uh, of media and platforms of, of, of social media, uh, even if they are also um, giving a hand, for example, in pandemic times, to, for example, communicate us from, from others. So um, we have to move on this uh, ambivalent um, period and to try to find an answer to, to fight a little bit with this uh, with these uh, main platforms and, and then try to understand the, the ideologic system that is inside of this uh, behavior and uh, but but more 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 important I think the, the, the ideological system or, or, or idea that is inside of this uh, of these platforms. I finally just uh, this um, uh, quote and Marcus uh, this uh, loss of conscience that is linked to satisfactory freedoms that help us to be sleep on the on the facilities that give us technology that is um, giving us this kind of um, tools that we are using and it's especially problematic not just uh, on on social aspects but also on health issues related for example with mental health mental health on young people, I think not just in Spain. Well, thank you so much for, for your attention. Uh, and we are, of course, um, able to your comments, your critics, and of course, your questions if you have someone. Thank you so much again for your, for your invitation this afternoon. Thank you very much for the great presentation. Uh, so do we have any questions? Please feel free to just uh, switch on your mic and camera and go ahead if you have a question. Hi. Hello, Martin. Hi. I'm interested uh, less in uh, examining uh, individual behaviors and reactions to the confrontation on the overuse of social media and more on the uh, uh, she, uh, on the data that perhaps you have or haven't connected with the um, communal aspect uh, linked with the personal aspect of the growing up people or the young adults. So my question would be uh, what communal aspects and what actual needs on the personal level uh, people used to justify the usage not in terms of service or product because this is the marketing talk but in terms of my own need my own feelings uh, you know this kind of uh, this this kind of more personal justifications um, okay. the other way around <laughs> Yeah, well, um, we asked for the motivations, the personal motivations, and we could see that they, especially they mentioned uh, this, this dimension of communicating and knowing things about their friends, although these friends, uh, maybe they don't know them quite well, but because they are only friends from the platforms, but they want to keep in touch with them, but without speaking with them just seeing their pictures they they assume that they are in touch with these people right so uh, one specific motivation is is this being uh in touch with people or being aware of what people is doing this kind of things also um they they feel that it's something that helps to create their own identity and being part of the group of, of a community, um, especially this 
this was very very interesting this how how they think these platforms allow them to to get more information and create a more complex identity um another another interesting thing that they 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 talk about is this idea of uh, i need to be in the in, in these platforms because um if if i'm not there i'm losing um important things whatever it, it would be so um they uh, they have kind of a, a fear of of missing out which is actually now uh called this uh, formal this fear of 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 missing out something even though they they don't know what exactly they, they are missing out but it's it's kind of of, of um, something necessary for their um, social um behavior let's say and of course they they also want to to look for more for information also they they express this this need of information i think there is a, a very interesting paradox in this kind of uh, information needs because uh for example when they use uh, twitter for for example uh to create this um information need to satisfy it. They also said that uh, social media help us help them to, to, to inform themselves. But at the same time, they are absolutely conscious about the disinformation issue on, on, on social media. So this is like, whoa, um, how do you manage with that? Uh, and say, well, we try to understand uh, what kind of information is, is true and which one is false. But uh, as all of we know, it's, it's very difficult in, to, to distinguish this kind of information for, of course, for, for the majority of, of people. And we, we are continuing doing this research. And just yesterday, I was uh, in a focus group also trying to make a, a longitudinal analysis. And they, uh, they say something very, very interesting. There is the, 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 the I want to be part of this uh, necessity of be part of a community but in the discussion, they also said, well, but this, this is a community that I don't know who is the other one. I, I just believe that there is someone that thinks similar uh, issues you know, like me, but I really don't know who is behind the, the screen. Uh, and they are also um, a little bit uh, critical with this, with this issue, you know, because yes, we are part of a community, but this community is absolutely different as a physical community. And they start also to 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 ask themselves if uh, well uh, this kind of community uh, or this concept of community have to be reshaped a little bit to 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 the different one that we have before. Yeah, uh, I encountered the same issue when uh, uh, under my supervision and we did a small research on the uh, virtual communities around the. Um, clans existing in the network games mm -hmm. and the values ascribed to the trading of the virtual goods you know people buy magical swords for real money and i was interested in uh, what n n not exactly on the economical explanation of it or the market model for trading uh, virtual goods but rather on the aspects of communal why exactly what values people ascribe to being in the community uh, linked with buying the virtual sword or whatever else in the game or virtual gun mm -hmm. it depends on, on an actual game so it's the, 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 the actual example is not that important and two concepts uh, were su suggested but uh, emerged in our discussions in my group so first of all we played a bit and it could be counterintuitive counterintuitive for some sociologists especially from the older generation but uh it kind of you know it moved our imagination a bit so we moved back to the concept of imagined communities mm -hmm. by benedict anderson yeah. and we asked because this is the basically the same question we participate in the community in which we do not know uh, personally the members mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't really matter whether it's a nation or the virtual group mm -hmm. uh, just you know the anderson used the nation as the um, 
um, as the case study uh, because it is important and uh, it, in this role it was it is understood in soci sociology usually but the definition as such is not limited to the political or state level so that was our initial intuition to kind of go back to the anderson or its uh, or his theoretical uh, not necessarily marxist uh, mm -hmm. issues but on the to, to this issue and the second one which may be you probably also encountered it uh, when i um, when i do uh, research or just supervise master's thesis on twitch and uh, streaming media or asymmetric relationships um, I usually play with uh, parasocial relationships. Are you aware of the concept? No. Uh, have you heard about? Perhaps not, because it's uh, more from uh, audience st studies from the 70s and television sociology or sociology of TV rather than digital sociology. And the mm -hmm. whole concept is basically it was a theory for 70s or 80s, a uh, medium scale theory about the development of emotional attachment uh, between the audience and uh, the presenters on the TV, uh, anchor of the news, people who uh, supervise the uh, competitions or famous broadcasters who basically build their communication model on this, on uh, giving this feeling to their audience that they are being their personal friends mm -hmm. uh, without the actual ability to respond so mm -hmm. uh, we have the fr some elements of friendship mechanism uh, as felt uh, in the audience but without the reciprocity mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time it's much more mass, mass scale it's hopelessly uh, psychological and under theorized from the critical point of view so you know uh, there's a lot of work to do from the sociological yeah. point of view uh, so uh, you know it's not uh, it's not really a a solid fixture uh, it's rather something to play with uh, but more conscious streamers or kind of you know activist streamers people who think about their role in the ecosystem uh, examine this and that it's may be yeah that may be helpful yes, and the third one sorry for boring everyone no, no. Topics, but you know the authors ask <laughs> for theoretical things and i'm a sociologist so wait sorry for my friends oh. from economists group <laughs> from the lab. i i think martin on, on the on the issue and the emotion emotional relationship with this kind of uh, hall of fame presenters yeah there's a, a difference between 19, uh, 2019 and 2021 on motivations. And yeah. one is, is this one. Is in, in the first study, we uh, do not feel that they are looking for, for fame, for success, for recognition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and nowadays, yes, they are looking for that. And of course, in Instagram and YouTube, they are looking for that. And perhaps it's this, this kind of association with emotional values related with this famous person that has a lot of yeah influence. and there is obvious obviously another uh, layer of interpretation because in some social groups or in some cohorts mm -hmm. of the audience there is mm, there isn't that much a uh, cult of success as much as rather celebra celebration of failure mm -hmm. we have some celebrities or youtubers twitch streamers or whatever other or, mm, content creators uh, that do that you participate not for the sense of being the best mm -hmm. but uh, to share the you know the not really positive emotions mm -hmm. and uh, this is something that is less accustomed uh, to the kind of you know glitz and glamour uh, mm -hmm. 70s or 80s tv Mm -hmm. And this is something specific coming up uh, in the um, 
you know, I, I haven't done the large scale study for Poland. I'm just doing small scale studies. But this is something I see in, in, in the smaller studies, that this interest in, shifts more into um, this kind of, you know, celebration of failure as a kind of rebelling to the cult of success mm -hmm. or as a possible uh, split uh, inside the cohort. So uh, the third point, I'm also playing with the theoretical concept. Um, perhaps you, uh, you, you probably know it, so it's rather a case, you know, when I speak it aloud, it becomes so obvious. Uh, in, in the 90s, uh, feminist philosophers, uh, Toronto and Fisher, proposed uh, ethics of care as alternative Mm -hmm. uh, to some approach, and it uh, and it picked up in some layers of sociology, and I found out that in some cases, especially uh, for the you know the generations that rise in the permanent crisis, mm -hmm. I found out that the, almost every sociological theory uh, gets better if you add the care perspective to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's uh, true. And this is also resonated by the uh, by the audience because um, in my interviews and in my focus groups, when I ask the questions about the care, suddenly I stop getting the official talk, mm -hmm. and I start getting you know the real talk. The real, one. Yeah. You, you, you know the differences. <laughs> well, if you have done that for focus groups, so I don't have to. So that would be my suggestion. Suggestions, but that That's was lovely. That was lovely study, and thank you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, you. Yes, we we are trying to to put this issue on on not just on digital digital rights, but also on self care. See this digital well being because um, nowadays it seems is is the way that they can we, we all that we use uh, these uh, these digital platforms etc can can we cope with this because it's true that we also begin to observe some problems related with anxiety uh, with this self image of the body this kind of things that uh, may cause uh, uh, problems uh, mental health and, and problems in young people they start uh, revealing this kind of, of of things that are worrying and and maybe this notion of of this care for for this Con consumption or this behavior is is a key point for for that maybe yeah uh, also one more thing sorry that i talked too much but you inspired me so much to think <laughs> mm, one more issue uh, uh, in my studies i found out that it's it is beneficial to move from the mm, uh, from fixing on the individual perspective or tr kind of you know trying to understand the user from the perspective of the user is broken and he or and they use social media to fix their problems yeah hmm. uh, rather i've just assumed okay this is normal for this population <laughs> because it's so common that it cannot be taken a small adjustment or uh, deviation anymore. So it's the same trick as uh, after Becker was done with marijuana. Mm -hmm. Switch from deviation to the norm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just three. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the very interesting discussion. <laughs> um, do we have other questions, comments, perhaps? Uh, I have some very general, if you have still the time to, to answer this. Yes, no problem. So I've been wondering, because there's this talk about uh, 
when it comes to attention that it's actually becoming quite scarce. And in the sense that, well, we, there are some studies at an individual level that basically say that if there's some attention strain, there's some psychological distress involved and stuff like that. But then on a larger level, at the market level, if there's not the, you know, if there's no more attention left, kind of, then everything kind of starts competing against each other. And I've been wondering if this is, uh, if you think that this is something that's actually going on, like there's no more attention to find. Uh, and how could COVID factor into that? Uh, and this, I guess, also somewhat uh, refers to your study, which I think what you found is interesting that it's TikTok and Twitch emerged, as you said, but it didn't seem to like take from the other uh, platforms. And I'm wondering if this is um, because the people still had some attention left, <laughs> or maybe there's also the another factor like, well, the pandemic started in the meantime. And there's some reports saying that people now have more free time. So perhaps they just, you know, uh, use that free time on more social media. Yeah. <laughs> it seems it's, it's this, yes, that the amount of time that they devote to social media has increased. Uh, maybe because we had to be at home and, and we couldn't go outside and and then people tend to use more these devices. Um, it, it, it can be, I, I think it's it's a hypothesis that can, it, it, it sounds well, but what we don't know exactly if it's only because of, of the pandemic situation or it's because uh, simply they, they, they don't have so much alternatives of, of using this free time or this control of, of free time is, is more devoted to, to these platforms, actually. But it's true that it's it's interesting to see that they, they don't diminish their consume of other uh, platforms, but they sum up to the, the consume of, of, of this new, especially Twitch, etc., or TikTok. Mm. I, I, I was um there's there is more attention yes uh, and time is um um in other parts of our sociability or individual actions mm, for example people is, mm. is is more now on on screens not just uh, on uh, on streaming platforms but also for example on um on, uh, on on gaming and uh, this time of gaming or this time that christina had said that uh, people start to be more connected on other platforms is uh um maybe it's taken away from other daily yeah. activities like for example sleep sleep yeah <laughs> or... I was, because there there is no no diminution um reduction of the time on on social media the the the, the the piece of the of the of the cake is the same, but the cake is, is bigger. So <laughs> we are going on. We are eating uh, more hamburgers <laughs> now uh, uh, with the potato fries and and this very very bad food. But they are giving this this option. And the other one is uh, at least uh, well this um, problem with Facebook issues has uh, stopped the project, but children is already um yes. the, the the target that uh, is now a little bit more protected we hope that the continue will be the, this this way but for example in in other studies they have demonstrated that TikTok has no uh, no problem with the uh, with the counts created by people who have four five or six years old so um this kind of uh, they are trying to get attention uh, and i don't care who is behind the screen i need the, the attention uh, also the parents are, are looking for that and also an ancient people is also connected to, to the to the social platform and uh, they are very connected to that very very addicted
Okay, thank you. And just uh, just one question also about your study. Uh, so, would you, because you have data from 2019 and 2021, right? Or have you tracked these people through the whole period, uh, like for two years? Well, we start with the with the second method, with the um, monitoring this installation of app. And the focus group from 1929, we have some, um, 19, sorry, <laughs> yes, 2029, 19, uh, and uh, 2020. And we have now we're trying to, to make this a, not, a, a, new, a new collect data. We started in 2016, but just with a survey. Sorry. Survey. And, um, we feel that we need the, the other elements to complement this uh, this issue. So, well, we are we have data on uh, on survey from 16, 17, uh, 19, 20, and 21, and we continue doing this uh, this, this research with the new methods uh, from focus group and and monitorizing the the, the mobile phone use. I see. I see. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it was very interesting. Uh, I hope we can maybe there's some way we could do some work together in the future, perhaps. Uh, I'll definitely. <laughs> yes, yes. Please, uh, we're still in contact, and uh, perhaps we have some ideas to perhaps some some comparative research or or some European project, whatever. Mm. That would like be that. also great. Yeah. Great. That would be great. Uh, so thank you very much for today. Thank you for agreeing to talk. Um, and well, hopefully we'll see each other uh, at the seminars or in person at some point. Uh, thank you so different. much. What's the heck? Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks so thank much. you. Well, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.